Thank you, colleagues, uh, fellow panel members, and to the organizers, particularly IGAD uh, and ICPAC, for inviting IOM to speak to this important topic. I don't have a PowerPoint, so I'll go straight into um, what I need to, to say. Um, I'll open by outlining the interlinkages between climate change, migration, and displacement in the IGAD region. I will then give an overview of IOM's work to address climate and environmental related mobility to demonstrate um, the breadth and complexity of this topic. With interlinkages between climate change, migration and displacement in the IGAD region, as we've had, climate change plays an important role um, in the shaping human mobility with sudden onset disasters such as drought, temperature and sea level rise leading to different migratory outcomes. According to IDMC, who you've, you've already heard from them, over 1.7 million new displacements associated with climate-related disasters were recorded in seven countries of the IGAD region in 2019 alone. For a region like IGAD, where a large part of the population is highly dependent on natural resources, the effect of climate change is undeniable. Yet, the link between climate change and, and migration is by no means linear or simple. For example, because slow onset processes are compounded by many other indirect pressures, most of which are related to livelihoods and economic laws. Therefore, it is hard to de determine a single push or pull factor. As a result, there is no comprehensive data on such migration. A further complexity is that different types of climate change impacts also result in different types of mobility and associated vulnerabilities. Sudden onset disaster displacement is usually rapid, temporary, and short distances. There's immediate risk to life and little time for preparedness and decision making. Migration due to slow onset processes, on the other hand, can be purposeful and planned. While voluntariness can be de debated, it is usually based on economic decisions and can be temporary or permanent. This type of migration can be internal, such as from rural to urban locations or across borders. In IGAD region, we must also recognize that there are many communities who cannot afford to move and suffer from forced immobility. I'm using that in, in quotes. If migration is used as an adaptation strategy to climate change and environmental degradation, um, then, in then the inability to move can be devastating. This typically occurs when cycles of poverty erode people's resilience. For example, IDPs living in situations of protracted displacement are an example of forced immobility. These complexities have led to IOM defining environment, defining the whole issue of environmental migrants as persons or groups of persons who predominantly, for reasons of sudden or progressive change in the environment, that adversely affects their lives or living conditions are obliged to leave their habitual homes or choose to do so either temporarily or in other cases permanently and who move within their country and sometimes across borders and abroad. Before moving on to how IOM works to address the migration environment and climate change nexus, I'd like to make a quick reference to the COVID-19 outbreak, which saw human mobility significantly curtailed. With global restrictions, this pandemic has underlined mobility is an adaptation strategy we have taken for granted for a long time. When we are trapped and can no longer move within or outside of our borders, the impacts can be catastrophic. This is especially the case of populations that already suffer from impacts of climate change. With this, let us recall that COVID-19 is a zoonotic disease spread from wildlife to humans, debatable for now, and that the alarming emergence of this disease is closely related to environmental degradation and climate change. On IOM's work, um, as, and as recommended by the Global Compact for Migration, we need a whole of mobility approach to environmental migration crisis, looking at all patterns of forced and voluntary movement, including immobility, to understand how they impact on people's needs, vulnerabilities, and capacities. In our region here in, in IGAD, IOM does this by addressing drivers of environmental migration and promoting durable solutions with local, national, regional, and continental partners. We do this through data collection and research, through capacity building, through advocacy and policy work, and through direct programming with vulnerable communities. 
We also rely on adaptive programming that meets immediate needs while contributing to situations that are more suitable for longer term development efforts in line with the OECD DAC recommendations for the humanitarian development peace nexus. For example, by generating sustainable incomes in land, a restoration, sustainable production and consumption and related service provision in a manner that builds social cohesion and regenerates trust, including for local authorities as service providers. For example, in Ethiopia, IOM works with returnees, people who are returning back to Ethiopia and migrant sending communities from environmentally degraded villages by restoring agricultural land, land through agroforestry and water harvesting. We support returnees and their communities to build their relationships and livelihoods in a sustainable manner. In South Sudan, another example, we support the government and the community-led efforts to mitigate the impact of increasingly severe seasonal rains and subsequent floods, which trigger displacement and has increased the risk of conflict. This includes local capacity building for shelter repair and improved infrastructure for water catchment and management. In Somalia, we have undertaken research to better understand the push and pull factors of rural urban migration. And we are working with the government to identify longer term policy and programming solutions for migrants, something that we're already having a discussion with ICPAC and other partners, how we can partner on these issues. In Kenya, as an example, and this is a much more interesting for me as well, is the work we do with the diaspora, to the Kenyan diaspora out there to develop livelihood opportunities for rural urban migrants that are environmentally sustainable. And we've launched a plastic recycling initiative in one of the informal settlements around Nairobi, just to see how that works together with how we can bring the diaspora in working with us in looking at that. I won't take a lot of time, but in closing, I want to say, I want to emphasize that IOM believes that mobility in the context of climate change should be a choice. It should be one of the options amongst different opportunities. At the same time, sometimes we need to identify new solutions in places of origin to either prevent forced migration or to reintegrate people who have migrated and returned home. Sometimes we need to facilitate migration. We don't have a choice as an adaptation strategy to climate change, including by helping migrants find economic opportunities elsewhere. And through all this work, we need to apply a human rights-based and gendered approach. One in addressing environmental migration to reduce the vulnerability of populations exposed to adverse environmental stresses. Two, enhancing the resilience of the populations on the move, such as pastoralists that we have in our region, returnees and IDPs, and to build their host and society's capacity to protect the environment. We must obviously integrate climate change mitigation in all that we do. Ahmed, I think I'll stop here for now and I look forward to having a discussion on this. Thank you very much.